my journey or our journey. Maybe because our journey has to have an end. It started maybe 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, but it has to have an end. How can we end our journeys? We might have started our journey without knowing that we are starting a journey. But now we know that we are at the end of our journey and we have to keep the best of our journey to the generations to come. Maybe this is a sign for all of us, young and young. I don't believe in old age because I'm younger than you. <laughs> and if you're going to wrestle me, I will win. Okay? So because we are in the middle of our journey and people need every, every second, every minute, every thought, every idea, every experience, every failure, every success, every motivation to start the journey, not from scratch, from where we ended our journey. So we are indebted to the poor people who let us to stand up on high seats or high platform or under the spotlight everywhere, anywhere, without sharing us with us such a platform. It's quite often we forgot to remember or to mention the people who created us, the poor, the displaced, the marginalized, the victimized individuals in different parts of the world. Whether they are black or white, brown or yellow, Muslims or non-Muslims or have no faith. We have a duty during our journey to pass the stick of the relay team to the generation to come. We have to know why we are here for. Why did we come to work in human appeal? What's human appeal? What's Islamic relief? What's Muslim aid? What's Oxfam? What's Save the Children? What's uh, 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 Care International or Plan International or CAFOD or, 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 or? What are they? Is it just a job for a salary? Is it just a mean for living and life for us? Or is it a connection between me in the middle of one of the most prosperous countries to the people who have no countries, who have no societies, who have no communities, who are living in the middle of no man's land. Like I've seen the snow falling in Pakistan and the snow in Lebanon and in different parts of Syria where people don't have any pair of shoes to wear. And they tend to have. They're receiving calls from Idlib day in and then out. We need a tent in sub-zero temperature. Not we need a porta cabin. We need a tent. We need shoes. We need food. We need clothes. We need jacket. We need trousers. And we throw the second-hand clothes of us into the recycling uh, pens here in this country. This is the part of our journey. Our journey is not just send an email. It's not just sending messages. It's not just a Facebook message or an image. It's not just a report that we're going to do it. It's a feeling of the agony of the human being who is standing to make me a better man, to elevate me, to let me to have an award, to have a prize, to have a salary, to have an insurance for my family and for myself, to have proper education for my children. Those people who do not have a tent in the middle of the snow in Lebanon or in Pakistan or in any part of Africa or Latin America or Asia. We talk about our journey. You know why? Because our journey could end like that. But are we prepared to see the end of our journey without being prepared to be inside the second journey 
started after ending our first journey in life. Because we never die. We go from a life to a life to eternity. A life on earth to a life underneath earth to a life in eternity with the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, either in heaven for all of you or maybe in hellfire for somebody like me. Nobody knows. And nobody can guarantee anybody in anything. And nobody can save you. Nobody can clear your sins. You have to clear your sins yourself. We have to clear our sins ourselves. If I drop some ink on my jacket, I have to clean it. It's not going to be cleaned if I don't clean it myself. So don't tell me that somebody will clean my sins. It's only have to be me. Because I am the sinner, and I have to be the one who asks Allah for repentance and forgiveness. So our journey will end now, maybe in tomorrow. Nobody knows. When I keep looking at the Facebook, the most upsetting is the age of the people who died. Every day, I send condolences to 30 or 40 or 50 people without knowing them. Even my wife told me, do you know them? I said, no, why should I know them? Just, I said, may Allah grant you heaven. Muslims or non-Muslims, it's entirely up to Allah. So when we look at this, most of those are young people at the age of 20, 25, 30, and less. So, and this, now there's a new thing called uh, sudden death, which is happening. To be prepared for it. Sudden death. If I die now, inshallah, I am nearly 70. Okay? But I look younger than her. <laughs> Which is it her? <laughs> it's him. <laughs> so when we, look, when we look at this, it's happening. The connection. What's my connection for the people that I'm promoting? I'm not promoting images. I'm not promoting numbers. I'm not promoting figures. I'm promoting lives. Lives of the living people in Agoli. The lives of the living people who live in agony and who have no facilities as much as I have. And my salary, my payment is paid by them because it comes to me as a CEO or it comes to me as a director or it comes to me as a manager because the people donate the money for them and I have to be their custodian. This is the relationship that we need to create between us and them. It's not them between us and the big us. It's our family. It's our children. It's our sisters. It's our aunties. It's our neighbors. It's everything. Let us have this feeling that we need to let them to enjoy a part of our life. This is our mission here in Human Appeal. Please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, don't ever, don't ever forget your mission and don't ever forget to deliver your message and don't ever forget to keep focusing on the people who make us happy, on the people who give us their love to live through our lives. For the people who actually, when they suffer, we enjoy, because we raise more money from their suffering. This is the mission of any so-called humanitarian or development or social organizations. It's about the being, the people, about the people, not about the images. It's about a raped young girl in DRC, or any part of the world. It's about the one who raped is complete and is continuously raped by others in the same village. This is the image of the girl who is suffering and suffering and suffering. She's not my daughter, but she is my daughter. She is not my sister, but she is my sister. How can she be not my sister? 
and she's my sister because I need as a humanitarian worker, as all of you and all of us here, I need to have them here. I need you to have a heart to accommodate 7.8 or 7.1 billion. You don't underestimate the capacity of your heart. Don't ever underestimate the capacity of your brain. Don't ever underestimate that you are the most complicated creation of God. More complicated than the stars and the uh, planet itself. Because Allah has given you a capacity in your brain and the capacity in your heart and the capacity in your soul and in your spirit to have love to every being, not every human being. And this is your mission. And And this is our message. Live for a message that people enjoy its fruits. Not to live for a message that you enjoy only its fruit. That you only enjoy its fruit. Let your sharing is with others. Let your caring is for others. Let your being with others all the time. Because every orphan was sponsored in human appeal. Every woman and widow was sponsored in human appeal is looking up at us 24-7. A child who needs a football to play will say, human appeal will bring it for me. A child who lost his legs or her legs in a mile field and he wants to become like Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi, he will say, human appeal will give me a new legs for me. This is how, this is how, this is how they see you. This is how they see you. This is how they feel about you. This is how they talk about you. A child who is hungry said human appeal will bring the meal for me and my mother and my family tonight. You know how, how deeply, how deep is their love to you in their hearts is? Is because you are their only savior after God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the value of your mission. And this is the credibility of your integrity when we go and talk about lives of others, futures of others, dreams of others. Don't ever underestimate what the love that they give you. They can stand. Come here. You see, he is a child. I am the sinner. But he will come on the day of judgment. Allah will throw me into the hellfire. But hold my neck from the... Hold my... No, no, no. From here. Yeah, Yeah, no, no. (laughs) He will tell Allah, Oh Allah, don't throw him in hellfire. Allah will listen to him as a child. Allah will listen to her as a widow, to an orphan. Because Allah will respond to children who are in need, to the the orphans, because they are sincere and they don't have any attachment in their hearts to this life. And they have the love for the sake of Allah, sake of the Creator to all of you. Thank you, my son. You are going to save me? Sorry? You are going to save me? (laughs) You are going to save me? I have. Yeah, tell them. <laughs> how, how? How as, as a child? <laughs> how was a child going to save me? He's not a child. No. <laughs> how was my son you going to save me? Get you have down. to speak up. My lip to you. My lip? <laughs> Good, thank you. So this is our mission. And this is our message. And this should be our life. That's why whenever we talk about journey, 
we know that's going to be ending very, very, very soon. I'm very proud to come here to you in Human Appeal, very motivated about what you have been doing and what you will be doing more and more and more and more. And, more. and I believe that you will do more and more and more and more to save more lives and save the dignity and the credibility of many, many millions of people, not only thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. So I believe in you and I love you. And when I leave or I end my journey, I will talk to Allah telling him, I believe in those people because they taught me a lot. I used to come to Manchester here a long time ago, maybe 30 years ago. And we used to leg it, you know? I didn't used to have a car in the 80s. I was a medical doctor. I, uh, you know, is that right? Yeah. I used to be <laughs> a medical doctor, alhamdulillah. I used to take the bus from A to B to C to D. Even nowadays, I uh, uh, asked the, the authority to give me the free bus pass. Is that right? Because uh, I sit down on the bus, I see the people. I feel that I'm happy in the bus. In my car, I'm alone, home alone. One or two or three. You know home alone? <laughs> Are you one of the home alone? <laughs> and uh, so we used to walk door to door, street to street, shop to shop, to distribute leaflets while we were doing our PhD, and our doctor of medicine at that time. After 36 years or 37 years, we have what you have nowadays. Not only because of two people or three people or four people, but because of you believed in the mission and the message of the mission of how can to help and save the integrity and the dignity of the people that we deserve to stand next to them. We are enjoying ourselves being in, in a place where actually the civil liberty space is big. We have to utilize it. Because if it shrinks, we'll be like other countries, unfortunately. It's not shrinking yet. We have to expand it. Expand it and keep expanding. I congratulate myself today of being with you and congratulate you of having Dr. Ashmawi and congratulating you of being you because you have been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah and the Prophet sallallahu said, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ عِبَادًا اخْتَصَّهُمْ بِقَضَاءَ حَوَائِجِ النَّاسِ حَبَّبْهُمْ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَحَبَّبَ الْخَيْرِ إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّهُمْ الْآمِنُونَ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ يوم القيامة. For God, there are some slaves, male and female. He made them special. And he led them to be specializing in serving the dignity of people. Led them to love the act of goodness. And led the acts of goodness to love them. Those people will be saved on the day of judgment before Allah, before the Creator. It's you. It's not your choice to be here. You could have been taking better salaries in different organizations. But it's your choice of being here because you have been chosen by Him to serve the people that they deserve your help and your service. So I congratulate you. <coughs> And also I conclude by saying I love you, every and each one of you. I'm very proud of loving all of you as my sisters, my brothers, my daughters, my sons, whatever. There's no fathers for me here. <laughs> <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> thank you. And uh, well, now we have to thank Dr. Ashmawi. Come on. Uh, and thank Dr. Ashmawi <laughs> for... Uh, for, for allowing me uh, to come here to be motivated. Looking at you is motivation. Looking at you is uplifting me, clearing and purifying my spirits and my soul. That's why I keep looking at each and every face of you to cleanse my heart and cleanse my soul and cleanse my spirit. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
for you to leave such a uh, profession and come in, into humanitarian work, development work, where the organization didn't even exist? Uh, you have to start from, from the beginning. Yeah. First of all, I was not very successful. <laughs> <laughs> I was always getting the uh, from a but fail when I when I pass my medical uh, exam. <laughs> it's fail. Sometimes I fail one or two subjects. I have to reset them again. Even when I, uh, that's why this was reality. So when I came here, I came here to work and uh, have my license. I failed four or five times in English and medical science knowledge before I passed. When I passed, it was time to go to make the driving test. Four times or five times. <laughs> when I was wanted to get married to someone, I was refused two or three times. So I did all the success in my life, the sister of my life. I think I did not know that I was coming here for Islamic career. Because my plan is to come here to get my doctorate of medicine or my membership. On Sheffield, alhamdulillah. I failed uh, again. Okay. At the time of a crossroad uh, of Sabra and Shatina massacre, at that time, when I decided to distribute the leaflets of what happened in Lebanon in 1982, uh, the weekend of before my exam. That's why I went to the exam, and my mind was all over the place. So I failed, alhamdulillah. And that's actually. So all my life is about failure, and about failing, and they will teach you how to fail if you want. <laughs> I have my own shame, <laughs> So don't talk about success, because I was on one of the televisions, and the man was talking about me. I said, Doctor, so and so and so and so and so, making some story about somebody who's not in the room. I said, I'm not this man. And as I said, inshallah. So it's, uh, it takes a failure to become a successful individual. And I think, to be very honest, um, find my success is uh, woman. The worst, first, first of them is my mother. Have you seen my mother? Yes, he did. He kept my wedding. <laughs> yeah. My mother was a social worker by nature in her family because she was actually married to my father, of course. Yes. You know how you see my father? <laughs> <laughs> he invited you. Uh, well, I, I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was a scholar of, uh, of uh, Islamic uh, knowledge, as actually professor of Sharia. Ah. Yes, jurisprudence, and he was talking about theological side, and she was talking about <coughs> social side because she was always uh, the one, the marriage, the divorce, uh, the lending, the borrowing. At, at in Gamaya, what's Gamaya in English? I don't know. I have to go. So she told me one thing: always mix with the poor to feel happy. Don't even look up at the richer ones of your friends, because this will give you a neck ache and headache. <laughs> Always look down. It gives you satisfaction with what Allah has given you. This was my mother's advice, and she is the first one who mentored me. That's what woman role in my life is crucial. The second one is my wife. She invited me for the dinner. <laughs> and you look like her. <laughs> and uh, so she is the one. If I'm successful, or I claim, or you claim that I'm successful, it's because of my wife, I got, who is sitting, being a crucial role for myself. And you know what? Once upon a time, we were invited to the Queen's Palace. We went there many times for this ambassador's reception in the palace where you meet the previous uh, foreign office ministers and prime ministers and, and, and. And she said, I don't want to go to the palace. She said, you don't need the queen. Come on, let's check out. No, 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 no. She's not the woman without going and I'd like to be on the spotlight like myself. She's somebody who'd like to work from behind. But to convince her to go to this at that time, but the second year said, once is enough. I saw the queen, I saw her, uh, the, the prince, Prince uh, Philip at that time, and everybody. And the, this is a character who is actually, without her, I could not have been here with you. So she is the one, actually, beside me. She's still with, I, I'm still living with her in her house. 
No, no, not, not, not vice versa. I am still living in her house. Because the house is your house, is not my house. That's my answer. Mm -hmm. Really, child. Yeah. And so? Thank you, Dr. Hani. Uh, what does it make to see the pain rather than to see it in a video or just sit behind a desk or a computer? Because I think the tears that we've seen now is not emotional. It's somebody being there with the people, sharing their pain, sharing their struggle, and sharing their problems. You be with the people. When you be with the people, not to take a photograph, but to sit next to them, to talk to them, to listen to them, to see the kind of food that they can eat, to see the kind of dress that they are wearing, to see how much that you have been giving things that you don't need, but you need most. So when you feel this heat coming through a smile on the face of a child that he's looking at you and you are his savior or his savior, you can't sleep. We can sometimes go to these areas <coughs> to do our job and give. Here, you have to switch your intention from the very beginning. When you start your journey from London, Heathrow, from Gatwick, or from Manchester, from any, 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 any airport, when you start your journey from there, your journey is there for a mission, <coughs> is to make people happy and to try to decrease the agony and lift the burden from their shoulder and put such a burden on your shoulder. When you go with this mission, what's your name, sister? Jessica. Jessica, very nice name. I wish I was called Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> when you have this before you start, and this is the intention, that's why if you go back theologically to Islam, every action you do by good intention become a sign of worship. Even if you eat to make yourself healthy, not overweight, healthy, and to help people, this is a sign of worship. Even if you've been learning, educated, to teach others as well as you get your job done, <coughs> this is a sign of worship. So when you switch any action, even if my relationship with my wife, which I enjoy, if I do it for the sake of Allah to have children and to protect myself from going out in the wrong way, this is a sign of worship. So when you have this kind of intention for any journey, you go to meet with those people, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will switch on the other feeling that you don't discover unless you put the intention button on. I saw you many times before. Yeah, of course, you are my friend. <laughs> Let me just say that uh, when Dr. Rani goes to the field, he does not sleep in hotels. He sleeps among the people. In the, the desert, desert, place. In the deserts, uh, everywhere. Uh, he is just, just uh, amazing. I, I, I can't no, imagine no, myself. I, that, uh, I can do that myself. Uh, <coughs> I wish I can, but... Uh, I can do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much all for, for attending. And uh, see you next, uh, next month, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you again, Dr. Hani. Thank you.